Welcome back to Pope's Projects and Project 818 SRX. Before I get into what we're doing today, I just hit 100 subscribers the other day, and I think there only might be one or two family members, so that's 100 enthusiasts is what I'm telling myself, or hopefully at least half of them. So thank you very much to those that are subscribing. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, do me a favor, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe, maybe like a few videos. So if anyone's still watching at this point, I've never started a video with a time lapse, so hopefully somebody's still watching. You might be wondering why am I putting yoga mat uh, on my fender flip, on my fenders. It's a simple reason. My biggest pet peeve about pretty much all the factory five kick cars and almost every video I've seen of them is as they're driving along, all you hear is of rocks hitting the fiberglass or rocks hitting aluminum. It drives me nuts. Um, I don't know how noticeable that is in the car. Probably not, but it just, to me, it seems like a little bit of effort and we can eliminate that. So this is not my original idea. The yoga mat has been done many times with factory five cars. Uh, glued down the yoga mat and now we just have a, we won't hear anything. It'll also protect the fiberglass. Another, uh, the guys at Cobras, uh, well, pretty much all the factor five. Some guys spend a lot of money on a good paint job, and for a rock to hit the bottom of the fiberglass fender and then get a spider crack on your fender with a ten thousand dollar paint job or more, it's 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 got to just just defeat you. It's just got to be crushing. So the yoga mat also prevents that. The other thing is the window, the the wheel wells in the front on the side and the rear completely are aluminum and you get a lot of this but with a little bit of sound deadening on the back we can eliminate that as well am i adding weight yes but we're not splitting hairs here i'm trying to lose some weight myself but you know it, it's you gotta decide what's more important. Is is this car being, you know, five pounds later and tingy? Like is it being the ultimate speed machine and save that five pounds worth it? To me it's not. To me, it's a no-brainer. Now you might be wondering why am I doing all this when I should be just getting it on the road? Well, uh, I had to do this panel which goes behind the wheel because otherwise your door just gets filled with rocks. So, and this is a very modified version of the factory one. The factory one is actually just this one that comes straight down. I cut it off and then had to make this. This is uh, the driver's side. The passenger side is already done. I'll show you in a second. And then this is a, the, the supply panel. It just had to be modified and dented in a little bit because I'm running one inch larger diameter front tires. So I'm at 25 inches total diameter versus maximum of 24 inches that factory five recommends. And to anyone else thinking about running bigger tires, don't just stick to 24 inches. The amount of work involved is not worth it. And I'll show you what's involved in that. So this is what I had to do to clear the bigger tires. This section here is what I had to notch out of this uh, inch and a half square tubing here. And then because I had to take a little bit off of this bracket for the lower control arm, I also gusseted that just to make up for the difference. Uh, this panel here needed to be uh, cut, a chunk of it off, and then bent back. This fiberglass needed to be trimmed. This section right here is actually moved back uh, a little bit, probably close to an inch, just because of the way I did my wide body, this, this whole side sail moved back. And then this is what those panels look like installed on the other side. So, as you can see, this hull had to be clearanced out, whereas normally this would come straight down, and then I think it kicks in a little bit. Uh, I needed all this room. And basically, right behind here is the, the top hinge, so we're in as much as we can. This is flat to the bottom hinge, or hinge bracket, I should say, on the frame. 
but that's kind of the finished look uh, the only part not sealed is right in here because I just I don't know yet if I'm gonna run a sway bar so I'm just gonna leave that open for now so I saw those passenger side fender well tins I noticed this little gem right here so what it was was a little pocket that the this would have been the gel coat that got sprayed into the mold but the resin and the fiberglass never really made it all the way through so that's a kind of a known problem with with I don't know about the other factory 5 cars I would assume but with the 818 these little voids in the edges which is a big reason why I didn't want to paint the car and finish the car before I started driving it because there's so much bodywork involved in it to paint it and then have a little void pop out like that one did just then would just suck so right now I'm doing a little bodywork sanding this down I actually put some filler on it um, I don't know like a year ago or six months I lose track now and I never sanded it so I'm just sanding this down now and I gotta add a little more filler then I'm going to head up to the body shop and see what they have to say about a primer. I'm going to try to just find a white primer that I can spray on there and the car kind of look uniform. I'm not worrying about it looking pretty, but it doesn't need to be, you know, these are different colors of dirt and, you know, some Sharpie mark from where I was going to put my gas cap and whatnot. So I'm just trying to get it look, you know, half decent so it doesn't look like an awesome piece of shit. So yeah that's what I'm gonna do now so I sped out a bunch of filler so while that's drying I decided I'd hop inside the car and finish up the little bit of wiring that's keeping me from putting the dash on the center console uh, and almost finishing the interior and that's the turn signals uh, that I want to wire into the CD7 now the CD7 comes with two spare uh, pinouts on the back that with switched ground can pretty much illuminate anything on the dash. Uh, I'm going to use it for turn signals, you can use it for anything. There's templates to use it, or not templates I should say, there's, there's bitmaps to use it for anything from you know two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive to turning on your AC to you know, just about anything. So, unfortunately, their harness doesn't come with uh, two leads, two flying leads, although it comes with other flying leads, but those are just blanked off. So then I had to figure out what kind of connector it was, and then locally find uh, a couple of pins, and then install those, which just took a lot longer than it should have. But I have those installed, and... Uh, terminated here with some uh, connectors and then I wired up my uh, emergency I'm using just a Subaru emergency switch that's the connector for it and I spliced in these two guys which were supposed to plug into that um, but somehow when I wired that up a couple of months ago I spliced those two little connectors into the wrong end and those are actually 12 volt and not um, a switched ground so I've got to tear back into that and figure that out, see if I can find a switched ground on, on my relays there. I've got a bunch of relays there I'm using for all my lights. Uh, I might have to add another relay, I'm not sure. But I'm going to get that sorted out. Um, I spent, again, far too long figuring out how to add the turn signals into the screen. So none of AEM's templates actually um, have turn signals built into them, and there's no, you know, click here to activate your spare one and spare two pinouts, and click here to use signal, uh, turn the signal lights. It uh, it's far more complicated, and then once you understand it, you kind of get why they left it that way. So I had to go on the forums and. It's just a bunch of technical jargon, and then I watched some YouTube videos of people using this software, and eventually it clicked what I had to do, and you basically have to um, add a function that uh, call it 
call it turn left, call it turn right, because they're not ones to select. And then you have to add two bitmaps, one blank and one solid arrow. And then tell it, you know, with switched ground it's solid arrow and with no ground it's blank. So on the template now it still looks blank like there's nothing there, but whenever I tap the, uh, I, tested, I tested it with a, a ground wire, sure enough it goes um, and flashes. So I'll show you guys that as soon as I figure out this relay stuff, and I'll throw the dash on, like the, the, the nice the Factory 5 dash, and make it look pretty, and then I'll give you, I'll turn on this CD7 for you guys to see just how it works, which is pretty neat. So, good news. One, I turned off this light, so now you can see my face. Not that that's a good thing. And two, uh, I got everything kind of put back together and looking relatively good. So let's start with the CD7, which I've been kind of teasing you guys with for a while. So here's our main screen. This is just the template I selected. There's lots to select from and you can modify all of them with AEM's dash design software. Uh, now you can see I added in signal lights on the bottom on each side and if you notice a little light on here this is for battery and then on the other side is for high beam. So there are a couple of pages this is the main one so I got AFR, water temp, oil pressure boost, RPM, kilometers, uh, this is gears, and odometer. Uh, also if you notice this little guy right here, uh, that's a GPS, so it goes green when I, when I get a symbol, I get, or a signal, um, so I'm going to be using GPS for my speed. And I'll get into a little bit more about that here in a second. So if we switch pages, you can also see here because of GPS, uh, we can do lap timing. So we can do uh, current lap and our delta from up or down on last lap uh, and, and the predicted uh, time, our fastest um, time, fastest lap. And then you still have your oil pressure and AFR, they're just over here now, and boost and, and water temp. Or we can go to this screen, which kind of gives me everything. Uh, this is probably what the screen I'll be on doing my uh, street tuning. Now, I also made this little center column here. Um, Factory 5 supplied a fiberglass one uh, with the early kits, which I just really didn't care for. And I think they later came out with an aluminum one. I don't know much about that. Um, I just made this guy out of aluminum quickly so I would have something. I'm not 100% sure if I'll keep it, if I'll change it, but I've got hazard lights here and um, this right here is a dual EGT gauge. So we got front and rear rotors. And then down here I've got uh, just 12 volt, some USB ports. And then this looks like USB ports. Well, it is USB ports, but this is for the bottom one is for the infinity, and the top one is for the um, CD7 to plug in. And I left this area blank because I'm thinking maybe I'll make a folder for my phone and just use my phone for GPS and for music and just get a Bluetooth amp. Down here we have AEM's Vehicle Dynamics Module. So this is a accelerometer, G sensor or whatnot linked up to the GPS. So with this we can, um, I'll be able to do real track mapping when I go to the track. Uh, we'll know, you know, G-forces in, in, in each corner. Um, and, and under accelerating, uh, under acceleration, under braking, and basically be able to data log um, my driving, I guess. So, and 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 
and of course how the car is handling. So I think a lot of useful information that I'm not quite sure how I'll, I'll decipher just yet, but I'll get to that when I when I can. But it was an option to get that with the CD7, and uh, I didn't want to have to mess around with wiring the Subaru um, speed sensor into the Infinity. It was just easier to do it this way. So it'll all run off the antenna, which is right here. So I'm going to end the video here. The next few days for me is going to be uh, a lot of sanding and priming and filling and priming and sanding. And that, there's not a whole lot there to film. It's also too damn hot to be doing that work, never mind doing that and filming. It's like 30 plus, which is you know, like, so like 90 Fahrenheit. Um, so probably not the best time to be doing a bunch of sanding of fiberglass, but uh, it's it's a good time right now for me to get this all done. I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks I can take this to go get um, my final safety inspection. I did have one inspection done back Christmas time, which I don't think I told you guys about. So it in Alberta we have to get all of our paperwork inspected and the frame gets inspected and the serial numbers on all the major components, like the engine and the transmission, all get documented. So there's a guy who comes out and does that and then he puts a VIN number on the car. So it, it's 2018 Factory 5 818S. Uh, so it's officially a car and has been since Christmas and hopefully in the next couple of weeks it'll be on the road. I tried a little bit of the white primer I picked up at the body shop and, and it's close enough. It's it's flat, so I think what I'll do is anywhere um, that I didn't have to do repairs, I'll probably just scuff up with a scotch pad. Scotch pad. So uh, at least all the body then will just be flat white and presentable. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going on body work this week. And when, when I do something exciting, I'll be sure to film it and show it to you guys. So in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you've watched this far, please subscribe, hit the like button, and please comment, ask questions. Uh, I like getting some feedback, uh, negative or positive. It's, it's all welcome. So uh, until next time, guys, peace. Thanks.